Hey, this is Robert with Clean Pool and Spa. And in this video, actually a series of videos, I'm going to show you how to clear up uh, this pool right here. This is a nice green pool. This is a neighbor's pool. Um, and I'm just going to come down here, and as you can see, obviously you can, this is very, very green. And the issue with this is that the cyanuric acid is a little too high. Um, and what I want, want to do today is to just tell you that if you have a green pool and you go on the internet on someone's website or um, YouTube video like this and you're gonna see a green pool let me show you how to clear up a green pool and I, I'm here to tell you that a green pool does not equal a green pool doesn't equal a green pool green equals green equals green is the furthest thing from the truth and this is going to save you a lot of time and money and frustration if you understand this concept now um, for instance this green pool right here this has too high cyanuric acid um, I took the test using my K2006 test kit and it came out 100 I took it to the local pool store a uh, sample of the pool water for analysis uh, they did all the readings and they came out with 90 parts per million so um, I got 100 they got 90 but regardless the pool needs to be drained I have not done anything to this pool yet I haven't put one drop of acid or chlorine in here because it needs to be drained first the cyanuric acid is high once it gets around 90 100 110 if you've seen any of my videos um, I always say that it needs to be drained because there's a relationship uh, between the cyanuric acid and the chlorine that needs to be met. The cyanuric acid is seven and a half percent of the chlorine. Now to have uh, a clear pool with the cyanuric acid of a hundred you're gonna have to run your chlorine um, around seven to eight parts per million and obviously no one is gonna do that that makes the water unswimmable so the first thing that I'm gonna do before I do anything is drain the pool I'm gonna do a two-thirds draining refill um, fill it back up allow the filter to run for about 10 hours and then retest and make all of my adjustments now how I'm gonna do this I'm gonna bring the camera over here and because this is a cartridge filter uh, it doesn't have a multi-port valve so I have a submersible pump <clears throat> and the rope for the submersible pump is going to be hooked up around here so it can be suspended and I have the hose going out into the yard and into the street now if we come over here I'm going to show you the cartridge filter that they have <clears throat> here it is um, I've already turned the pump motor off because obviously you don't want it running. They have a tab feeder right there. So I just turn, turn the system off at the, at the switch right here. And now this is going to take a little while. This is around 2,000 gallons per hour for the, the pump. So um, it is going to take a little bit, but I calculated this pool to be around 17,000 gallons or so. Um, you know, there's a way, you know, that's length times width times length times width because it's somewhat of a uh, uh, irregular L-shaped pool, but it's length times width times average depth times 7.5, and that's how you get uh, the approximate gallons in this pool. So that's about it, and just stay tuned because there's a lot more coming. Okay, so I have the pump going the submersible pump I have it tied off right here um, I've always liked to do this whenever I cleared up pools in Arizona um, I always like to suspend the submersible pump I just don't like to put it right on the bottom because I want as much flow uh, into the pump as possible so again it's just going out right to the street and again, this is around I think like 1500 to 2000 gallons per hour so uh, it's gonna be a while before I am able to drain about two-thirds of the water um, so it's gonna take a little while but I'll keep an eye on it okay and the next thing that I'm gonna do is uh, take the brush and just brush very very well all the way around getting the walls and and floor because I want to loosen up any 
uh, algae, d dirt and debris that might be on the pole. All right, this is day two, and uh, went ahead and did a two-thirds draining refill, filling the pool back up again. Have one hose here and another one right over there. You can see that. So again, I haven't put any chemicals in this pool, not one drop of chlorine or acid, bicarb, nothing. I had to do a two-thirds draining refill because the cyanuric acid was too high. So I'm refilling it. And once it's filled to the proper level, I'm gonna filter for about 10 to 12 hours and then retest all the chemicals and we'll see how that goes. All right, I'm back a couple hours later and it's filling up pretty good. And it's gonna take maybe about one more hour to fill up. And oh, didn't mean to do that. So it's a lot, actually it's a lighter shade of green. Um, but it's doing pretty good and what I'm going to do now is being this is a cartridge filter uh, I'm going to take that off and here's the cartridge that I cleaned out this thing was just absolutely horribly nasty but looks pretty good right now so I'm going to put this in here let's get that tubing in there and then kind of fit it down in there be sure this is nice and tight so the cartridge is in there seated properly and just put the top on once again be sure that that's on the threads and spin spin this around and we'll be set Okay, so we have that tightened on there, and this does not have a belly band. This is kind of a smaller model cartridge filter. Um, but when you, if you have this kind of model, don't tighten this too much, okay? Just get it snug, because in here you have that O-ring, <clears throat> and you don't want that squashed or anything. You just want that nice seal all the way around. So just get it nice and snug, but don't over-tighten it. And then I'm going to take the pump, pump pot strainer, it's already cleaned out pretty well, so I'm just going to leave this, leave this like that. Uh, when it fills up, I'm going to prime the pump and turn the air bleeder. Air bleeder is all the way open when you have a system like this. Uh, when you're filling it up, you want to be sure that that air bleeder is open so that air can escape. Um, fills up very very quickly all right so I went ahead and filled the pool up as you can see it's uh, right, where, where, right where it's supposed to be yeah, that's a couple inches above but uh, evaporation will take care of it I wasn't able to get over here fast enough but unfortunately it didn't overflow um, let's go ahead and put the skimmer back on the skimmer cap all right, and that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna come over here, and now it's time to prime the pump. So I have my pool water right here, and I'm gonna pour this in here. It's been empty, so this is gonna take take a little bit. Okay, so I put the lid back on, everything's going, and turn on the switch. Let's see what happens. Okay, I have the bleeder valve open. You can see. Got a nice full head of steam right there. And the bleeder valve. I'm going to turn that off. Right there, and the pressure. That's about 9 PSI on the gauge. You can get that, that going. And as you can see, lots of bubbles coming out. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just let this filter uh, probably overnight. Right now it's about maybe 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Normally 
one full turnover, the water's around 10 hours, 10, 11 hours. I'm not going to come down here at 11, 12 o'clock at night. So I'm just, just going to let this run for 24 hours. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I put a lot of new water in. So I want one full turnover of the water, um, get that water fully mixed. Then I'm going to take all the tests with my K2006 test kit. And I'm also going to... Uh, take a sample of the pool water to the local pool store for analysis. Again, I'm not going to put, I, I haven't put any chemicals in at all. Nothing. Uh, it may surprise you, but want for one full turnover of the water. This way, all the new water will mix in with, with the old water, and that's going to be my starting point. Um, because any readings that I got prior to the refill are useless at this point. They're out the window. Wait for one full turnover of the water, retest all your chemicals, and that's your new starting point. So I'll be back tomorrow and see what's going on. Okay, so now is the time to start making the adjustments. I allowed the uh, filter to go all night, and I also took a sample of pool water to the local pool store, and I took uh, readings. Here, let me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just test it. <laughs> K2006 pool water test kit. Uh, and these are the readings that I got. Hopefully you can see this. Actually, I'm going backwards, but I want to want to draw your attention to the alkalinity. Because of the uh, fill water, alkalinity in the fill water is very, very high. So I knew that the alkalinity was going to skyrocket. And it is, um, was it 260? And I also want to show you the stabilizer. It went from 100 down to 25. Okay, that's where you want it. Now, it's very easy to add um, stabilizer rather than take it away. So if it's just a little low, go ahead and add some dichlor. But I'm not going to do that right now. Not really going to worry about the the uh, 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 stabilizer. I can add some dichlor later on. But the first thing that I want to do is to add acid to get this alkalinity down. Now, if you haven't seen my video on why you make um, adjustments in increments, you need to do that because I'm not going to pour all the acid in at once. I'm going to do this in increments uh, so I don't overshoot, okay? Because if I get it down to 50, then I'm going to have to add bicarb to raise it back up again, and that's just a waste of chemicals. So let's go ahead and lower that alkalinity. So gonna drop that let's come over here the first thing that you need to do, need to do is I'm gonna come over here and turn the system off right there and I have the acid right here and here's the deep end so I'm gonna unscrew this and in one spot I have about a half a gallon of acid in here right now. So, in the deep end, what I'm going to do is just, just in a circular motion, add the acid in the one part of the deep end. Okay? Now, because acid is heavier than water, that is going to sink to the bottom with the... Uh, broom here, I'm going to gently sweep the bottom to break up any hot spots. So I have the broom right here, and obviously be sure it's level because once it gets down there you can't see, and drop it down in there until it's there, and then just very gently, just sweeping the bottom right there, just, okay, you don't want to stir the water up too much and I'm gonna allow that I'm gonna allow that to sit for about four hours four to five hours and, and then I'm gonna come back and turn the system back on and then yeah I'm gonna shock the pool so we'll see how that happens